going to spread the word to friends, family, and the universe. 24 hours of music and talk. Radio without limits. That's why people keep coming back for more. That's UBNRadio.com. Hey, everybody, it is Wednesday, November the 18th. I'm Emerson Collins. And I'm Del Shores. And you're listening to The, the Del, Del and, and Emerson, Emerson Show. Show. Straight talk. Real gay! Yay! Oh my gosh, such an exciting time, such an exciting show. Hello, Del Shores. Welcome Hello. back. Thank you. How were your travels? How were your shows? My travels were really amazing. I went to my home state, our home state, and I got to see my family in San Antonio, which was kind of wonderful. I hadn't seen them in... I mean, I have great nephew, a great nephew that I'd never met, got to meet him and go to Target and buy him all gifts for the birthdays that I missed. And I had a really special time at San Antonio College. They did a production of Sorted Lives. And, you know, my mom was a high school drama teacher, so to see students do my play, it just brought my mom back to me in such a beautiful way. Uh, and and they did a great job. I mean, it's it's the, the, the brother boy, Eric Dorso, was so amazing. The girl playing Lavanda was great. The whole cast, they were all just really Really good. I got to teach school there, and then I did two shows at the Woodlawn Theater in San Antonio. It was a really great crowd. I was shocked. Uh, I'd never played San Antonio. And then I went up to Austin and did a show at Rain on Fourth, and they treated me with uh, with more respect than I deserve. So I oh, really oh yay, uh, <laughs> we love that. <laughs> I had a great time. Oh, that's so fun! Yay, I'm so glad. And how was your how was your weekend? And it's fine. We're rolling along. Last night was the second to last episode of season three of the People's Couch. Uh, it was particularly funny for me, uh, funnier even than some of the others with Scream Queens and the Voice and Vanderpump Rules, because the Vanderpump Rules cast is so easy to say ridiculous things about because they're all ridiculous and I love it. And so. I love that show. And I loved your show last night. I watched it with you. You were at my house. We do. We go to Dell's to do the live tweet because he gets the East Coast feed so we can live tweet because otherwise I'm just on Twitter like laughing along at people having no idea what they're talking about. I wonder do I do I have to pay more? Is that why I'm No, doing it's that? just the way Direct TV handles some of the cable channels. It's not you see, interesting. You you can tell by that question that I am a horrible, horrible businessman and I would have much more money if I knew what I was paying for and Oh, for what came <laughs> for how your cable worked? Well well, I, you know, if I, I, you know how they do that thing where you, you, they, they sign you up and they go, oh, and you get three free months of ESPN, nope. the super channels. And I go, I don't need those. No, they're free. And then they don't tell you, yes. but you have to cancel them after three months. After a certain amount. Nope. I always say no. They're like, we can, no, I don't want that. I want the things that I'm paying for. Yeah, but I had a better sports deal channels if you do- for no. a year. No. A year. And also I don't like, I don't want that anyway. That's kind of a hate crime for me personally. So like, don't give me sports ball channels it for was, free. It was well, anyway. that's really rude. And um, I could have had a massage for that. Moment. I would rather it say this channel <laughs> not available. Well, uh, like I would rather, like I want it to be grayed out. I want it to be not accessible. Like I don't want to ha- accidentally scroll up the channels and suddenly be watching hockey ball. But how weird is it? I have all those sports channels and I don't have logo. I don't understand that. I, Logo's I, a frou frou channel. It's like higher up in the higher packages here in LA. So you got to pay the good money. Well, or go not, to somebody's house. If they're not gonna put me on there, I ain't ordering it. Oh, <laughs> well, is that a work for every channel? No, just logo. just logo. Oh, okay. Since I was there once. All right. But, well, we have got a ton of exciting uh, news, and so uh, we have to announce one thing really quick, though. Yes. We did a we did a little uh, fun thing. Were you gonna do it? I was oh, gonna okay, leave you, do an intro. Oh, sorry, so you could share sorry, it. you do. It. I just love it when we talk on in front of you. See, we don't rehearse this show. Can At you all. tell? Can you tell we don't rehearse? At all. <laughs> uh, we did a fun contest on the Facebook because we are continuing through the debates that we're not going to talk about here because they make my brain bleed. Uh, but so we thought it'd be fun to ask who from the Sorted Lives world did the fans think would be the best president and vice president? So <laughs> Dell has the results of our very official and important CNN Gallup poll. Well, first of all, fourth place for vice president, which is frightening, was Juanita. Juanita was fourth place. So I don't know. I, I think what people are saying is that they would rather have a drunk run our country than the people who do. I don't know. Well, the vice president is just a vanity position anyway, unless the president gets shot. So. Well, I know, but can you imagine if Juanita had to step up? It's <laughs> dear people. I mean, <laughs> well, who came in at the top? Well, the, 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 the number three for, uh, for both, the, the runner up for both was Lavanda. Lavanda was runner up for president and runner-up for vice president. Uh, and then the by far away, the winner for vice president was Sissy. 
Sissy Hickey, who would just be fretting around, smoking outside the Oval Office, just worried sick about making, y'all just get along. Everybody just get along. So I guess that's why. And I just see her standing there going, well, I don't have to do anything (laughs) unless someone dies. (laughs) I'd never quit smoking if I'd known a Republican was going to get elected. <laughs> well, so who was the president? Brother Boy. Hands down, Brother Boy was the president. Which that I- is insane! <laughs> Dear fans of Sorted Lives, <laughs> he was, was in a mental institution for a really long time, and somewhat deservedly so. No, come on. He would. The good thing about Brother Boy is he could step up to that mic during during those talks, and he could just do a Tammy he Wynette song. legitimately <laughs> thinks Tammy Wynette is talking to him. She is talking to him, okay. Emerson. Okay. She okay. was talking okay. to his ghost. Okay. Her ghost was there. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm just saying, like, I don't know that I want somebody standing behind the podium and going, well, Tammy Wynette said. You know what? We're getting into this kind of weird battle where uh, like, that, that some people d- actually got into on the on the Facebook. We like to say the Facebook just because we're Southern. Um, and someone, someone had to remind somebody else, you do realize that this is sort of Hollywood fantasy. <laughs> Um, they, they thought someone was getting very serious. No, Brother Boy would not make a good. You know, we, well, that's the point <laughs> of the question because you're all insane. The only one in that world is Latrell, Latrell. that could actually run a country. And I would she say she got that one vote for vice president. That was it. Maybe a second runner-up like Wardell has some sense in there too. But everybody else, nut jobs. I, I think that Ty actually in the new Yawn. movie. Yawn. Yeah. Well, in the new movie. Yeah, because he's he's really become an activist. Well, nobody evolved. else has seen it. Nobody else I, knows what I happened. Know. I be quiet. I got. I can't keep telling. And of course, secrets. all of this is part of our continuing fundraising effort for a very sorted wedding, the sorted life sequel. So if you're interested, you know somebody with a lot of money, uh, hit up Dell at dellshores at me dot com. Uh, we can send you an investor packet. People getting those holiday bonuses and things, and going, oh, I came into some money. You can help us get this movie made next spring. Yeah, and you can have you can help entertain people, share some humor with us, and a very good message about equality as we continue to. Speaking which, of yes. equality, uh, a couple of exciting. Uh, one really exciting uh, of course ma- gay marriage uh, same sex marriage passed in Ireland in May but they had to pass a bill and have their president sign it so they actually began yesterday in Ireland so it was a very exciting day there in not so exciting equality news um, the hero ordinance supporters in Houston that we've talked a great deal about uh do feel emboldened by that victory as we discussed they were likely to do so and they are now coming for Dallas uh, because this past week the Dallas City Council unanimously voted to amend their non-discrimination ordinance to specify protections for transgender people. Now, it was always included under the definition of sexual orientation in their ordinance, uh, but they wanted to expand it and make it specific. It is not a change of anything. Nothing changed. 13-year-old ordinance. No issues with anybody trying to go into the wrong bathroom, but... These people out of Houston, the Texas Values Committee, the Texas Pastor Council, and Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick called it mind-boggling and appalling. So this is exactly what we talked about, this victory in Houston giving them motivation to go for ordinances that already exist in places like Dallas and 200 other municipalities across the country and to use these same arguments in places trying to pass that. So Dan Patrick was like on our side here. No. Oh, he said said the other was. Yeah, he paid a whole lot of money in support of the one in Houston. This is the Lieutenant Governor of Texas. Well, d- you're you're you were in Dallas for a very long time. I spend a lot of time in Dallas. D- it, it it truly is a blue city in a red state. D- what do you think about this? Do you well, think it's not I mean, su- it's not super likely they in Houston they only had to get seventeen thousand signatures to get it on the ballot. In Houston they would need fifty thousand. They require you know, 10 Dallas per- they'll need fi- fifty thousand. Yes, 000. in Dallas uh, because they require ten percent of the registered voters. So it's not likely to come up. But nonetheless, this sort of drive and motivation uh, in more challenging places. I mean, yes, I don't know. There's fifty thousand bigots in Dallas. They maybe could do that. Yeah, I don't but you got to actually find them and get their signature on stuff. Houston, it took them a long time, and that was one of the big issues was the the signatures and the validity. Of and they it. only have sixty days to do it, right? From the so, day yeah. that they file it, so okay. it's not super likely. But this, as we said, something to keep an eye on. And uh, Dallas, uh, all right, Dallas, slap folks. these people back, shut yes. them down. And that, nobody seems super worried, including the mayor, that's very supportive of the ordinance. So, and then down under, keeping up with the international scene. Last week, a report in Australia from a parliamentary joint committee on human rights found that a bill for marriage equality would help in discussion. 
But three of the government MPs wrote a dissenting report arguing the reform would infringe on the human rights of marriage celebrants, service providers, and children. Well, one of the MPs came back and described the three politicians as bigots scraping the bottom of the barrel. Now they want an apology, said labeling three parliamentarians bigots simply because they are standing up for marriage between one man and one woman is a new low in Australian politics. All Australians must be free to discuss these consequences without fear of being labeled a bigot. He clapped back saying, 59% of Australian Christians support marriage equality. It's the Ameri Australian Christian lobby that should apologize for pushing prejudice and misrepresenting Christian values. Amen. I just thought that they straight out came out and said, would you stop calling us bigots? Well, it is a it's a it's a harsh word, but it's it des I mean they deserved it, don't you think? Well, I mean, if it looks on. like a duck, quacks like a duck, it's I, a fucking bigot. <laughs> Emerson, that was funny. I know you're welcome. You went, wow, wow. Um, that so, was really funny. Um, I'm sorry, like I just can't with these people. Did anymore. that just come out? It, it did. What? Every once in a while, I'm on the sp Johnny on the spot, just creative. Good for you. Just in the moment. <laughs> um, but so nonetheless, I enjoy bigots actually having to say, "Would you stop calling us that? It's hurting our feelings." Well. People like us are dying, so I don't really feel bad about oh, your feelings. Speaking of, you have to bring your big, your your blessed or bigoted hearts T-shirt back because I was in San Antonio. I wore it one time out in Gay Town, and I had no less than ten people ask me, "Where did you get that T-shirt?" Oh, I love and, that, and, and mostly lesbians, quite frankly. Yes, the I have a strong lesbian contingent they in support. Love that T-shirt. It was very so. exciting. Um, that one, they, they can always do a pre-order at teespring.com backslash bigoted hearts. But I have my holiday shirt that ends tomorrow. Oh. That just is very simple. It just says ho, ho, homo with one of the O's as a wreath. John's putting it up in the room. I ordered it. I ordered the hoodie and I'm going to wear it as soon as it comes in. And it ends tomorrow gonna... so that people would have time to wear it in the holiday season. Because I always think it's funny when you get those... Christmas party invitations that say, Don, we now are gay apparel or dress festive. And so this is sort of a snarky uh, way to dress for the theme and still have a little bit of sense of humor. So I'm it, never taking it off until January the 1st. Those are at <laughs> teespring.com backslash ho ho homo. Or you can just go to my Facebook page. Um, so that's it. Shall we flash through the gay news? Yes, we shall. Um, all right. This, uh, and genuinely and very seriously, obviously, we've all been watching extremely closely after the horrifying terrorist attacks that occurred in Paris. Certainly, uh, the response and outpouring and what you've seen on Facebook, uh, it's, a, it's a city that's an ideal for many people. It's a travel destination, particularly for upper middle class and upper class people. Many uh, people of means make it visit to there at some point in their life. There's that city of light, romance, mm -hmm. ideal, that I think is part of the reason the response has been so strong in addition to the size of it. We're not going to fall down the rabbit whole of the crazy things that people are saying. I, I would just simply want to say about that, that um, when there is a humanitarian crisis, we have to do everything we can not to lose our humanity out of fear. But, dear homosexuals on Instagram, we found two of the worst people in the world on Instagram. Uh, put up the guy with the painting first. Yes? Uh, okay. Now, I do not come for thirsty gay men on Instagram ever. I think if you have worked hard on your body and you want to show it off, I'm going to say thank you and click like. Show your shirtless self. I don't care if you're at a dinner party, at the beach, at a business meeting. If you look great with your shirt off, don't wear a shirt. That said, this gentleman painted that incredibly beautiful, iconic image we've all seen of the Eiffel Tower peace sign onto his torso uh, for likes. Uh, now, the best part of it is the hashtags that he placed underneath it. And in d increasing order from best to worst, here are the dozens and dozens of hashtags he included. Je suis Paris, pray for Paris, Paris, France, love, heart, heartbroken, Europe, Barcelona, sad, sadness, it's not fair, stop terrorism, peace, peaceful, una photo al dia, pick of the day, fitness, fit, get fit, muscled, Insta boy, insta gay, man, six pack abs. That took 40, 40 minutes just to come up with all those. I, no, I feel like he's got them in a copy and paste thing because this is what these homos, these thirsty homos do on Instagram. And again, disclaimer, I love it. I have done it. I put, when I go to the beach, I put up my Speedo pic, a couple of likes and some silly comments make me feel good about myself. I'm not, right. hey, live your life, get your love where you can, live your self esteem the way you choose. But sir, do not co-opt a genuine international tragedy for your washboard. 
It it was it was poor taste. Like but, genuinely, and it, it was one of those things when I looked at it that I had to laugh because I mean the the tragedy of this all, but it's just so stupid. I have some narcissistic tendencies. I do not have a problem admitting that. But oh, sir, this no. is so far <laughs> down. Like he looked in that lake and didn't just fall in love with his reflection. He tried to have sex with it. Like this guy, I mean, genuinely, like, sir, you're every other day. But there was another one too, right? Yes, and this one, this boy just put up himself in an underwear and he said, sending love and goodbye, good vibes to all of the people in Paris today. Thank you for your time, energy, and patience with my visits. Already made it about himself. Je t'aime. Please take a moment near and far to lend strength to this gorgeous country in their time of need. Hashtag France, hashtag freedom, hashtag love. It's just him in his underwear. I guess he felt that after a tragedy, that killed and injured 500 people in France, what they really needed was a picture of his bulge to get through the day. I mean, homosexuals, all of us, that's not okay. Be thirsty any and every other day. I don't care if How you're thirsty you at an inappropriate people? time. Somebody uh, tagged it on Twitter. And then the second one, Dan Savage's husband, Terry, who I love, and who has an incredible body, and he shows it off all the time, advertising for Mr. Turk's swimwear in Palm Springs, came for him because the second guy was deleting the nasty comments that people were talking about. I'm like, I know we're not a monolithic community and we don't all represent each other, but you homosexuals make all the rest of us thirsty homosexuals look bad. Not all shirtless selfies are the same. Did they, did they take it down, or do you know? No, they're still up, because they're getting likes and attention. Oh, wow. Well, look what we just did. No, <laughs> I was really nice, and I didn't put their tags on here, but if you want to, you can certainly find it on the interweb and go uh, explain to them why this is not an appropriate opportunity to make this about yourself. But I think that they've probably gotten as much hate and as much love as, as they need. Don't you think? I mean, I maybe mean, I'm just mad that they have more Instagram followers than me. <laughs> that could be it. All right, and then another example, you know, because uh, the, the fear that is created out of what happens in a lot of these situations uh, can make targets out of people that have nothing to do with the situation because of small-minded people and small-minded bigots and the willingness to paint all people from a particular group of people, whether it's all Syrians mm -hmm. or all Muslims, with the same brush. And this next story is a perfect example of what that looks like and how we, as a community that has often been press oppressed and painted similarly, should not be doing that to any other group of people either. So, yeah, th it was uh, on Grinder, and we just saw some, some hate. Uh, a, a, a guy named Anthony Malganese of uh, Phoenix, Arizona, posted lyrics to one of his favorite pop songs on Grindr, uh, that that short just shortly after the terrorist attacks in Paris and the uh, the Arabic lyrics translate to I love you in the winter. They came from a song uh, that Al Thanea by Lebanese singer. The song was called Al Thanea. Uh, forgive me if you speak uh, Lebanese and I'm pronouncing all this wrong. Uh, Lebanese singer uh, Farouz. He had this exchange with another guy. Uh, the guy said, "Get that terrorist writing off your profile." And Anthony said, excuse me? The guy said, you must be one of those ISIS motherfuckers if you think it's okay to write that herka durka shit after yesterday. Anthony then goes, they're actually lyrics to a song by an artist from a country whose capital just got bombed a few days ago. Educate yourself. The guy goes, you better watch yourself. I'll kick your ass all the way back to Iraq if I ever see you in public. Anthony goes, well, I'm, a, I'm Lebanese, but thank you for proving your continual ignorance. The guy goes, I don't care what the fuck you are, smartass. You're just a dirty sand N-word. Anthony goes, oh, dear. Now I'm going to have to block you. Oh, poo. Um, That's just wow. Yeah, I mean, and horrifying. And, and certainly representative that, like any community, ours is not immune to bigots uh, in other directions. Um, that certainly racism is encountered by people of color in our community uh, on a regular basis from within and outside our community. But this particular, like, he just came for him because of a quote. Like, that's how far down that the That he didn't hole. understand. Yeah. That he had no idea what it was. And then when educated, he still didn't give a shit. He was just out to be a bigot. Um, and so, so we got homosexual bigots. Uh, certainly we do. And it's certainly something to be aware of within our community and outside. And I, I do. I always go back to this idea that being afraid often brings out uh, the worst things that people won't typically say out loud. And I think it's an important time to reexamine why you are willing to judge an entire group of people the way we as a group have often been judged by other people. Well, interestingly enough, I... Um 
you know, I, I don't want to be like the Instagram, you say, now let's make this about me. But go but, ahead. But, but, but here's the deal. I mean, you know, we have Grinder, we have Scruff, we have Growler, three different communities within our community. And I use Growler as a, uh, for advertising. They have a great shout feature. I have a huge bear fan fan people the bears love me i i mean i performed at timberfell at oz and i actually got a really nasty hate from advertising on growl uh, growler recently where someone just went after me and said you don't love our community you're only here to use us and you know blah 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 you're you're not here to to fuck us and i mean and i'm like well no i'm i, I said i'm here to network and i'm Anyway, it was just strange that that it, I find that 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 it happens within our communities though that we there are different communities that just like I don't like the twinks I don't like this I don't like this and they're going to go after you. Yes, but I think that's fundamentally even a different issue from judging within our community be about issues that have nothing to do with our community. Certainly, discrimination and judgment and clicks in our community is an ongoing problem we've talked a lot about. But like judging within our community of like I'm a white guy and I don't like black guys or I'm a Latino guy and I don't like oh, is true Muslim guys like judging us for characteristics that have nothing to do within our community demonstrate the the environments people grew up in and how they have not learned anything from their experience as a part of one minority group it's sad it's sad it's it, it, it yeah Okay, well... Um, all right, and flashing uh, on... Big news. A huge announcement yesterday that unless you live under a rock, you have certainly seen something about that Charlie Sheen uh, came out as HIV positive during a nearly 30-minute interview with Matt Lauer on the Today Show. Uh, he shared, of course, quickly that the reason behind it is that he has been extorted over this information by people in his life that he's paid out upwards of millions of dollars... He said 10 million. ...to keep people quiet... Uh, because they had the information that he was diagnosed four years ago. And he said a number of things that were interesting, uh, that he has informed every partner since the initial diagnosis of his diagnosis, uh, which would keep him from running afoul of any disclosure laws, because there are still 35 states where just not disclosing HIV positive status uh, carries criminal penalties. Uh, he stated that he's only had unprotected sex with two partners in that time, and that both of them were under the care of his doctor. Um, he is currently on uh, a full cocktail of medication and is undetectable, which, of course, in our community no means that we know that there is a very extremely low risk of transmission at that point. Uh, and they also interviewed his doctor, who talked very openly about their biggest fear with him, uh, that he would somehow relapse in drug or alcohol abuse that would impact his ability to stay faithful to his medication. That So far, that has not been the case, but that that is their great concern. But in that interview, he did admit that he's not sober. He said that he is not partying like he used to be, but he said he still is is drinking. And but it, it, I I watched it with you. I I, I found it, it, it interesting, like everybody else. And you were telling me today the big backlash was that people say, well, he deserves it because he he lived this lifestyle. And you know th they addressed that with him, and he said, well, they've got a point. Well, it was interesting you know, though that's... because there was a little bit of a like tisk tisk tone. Uh, from Matt Lauer in the interview that was a little bit gross because there's a lot of stigma associated uh, with people that are positive that we've talked about regularly within our community and that this mentality of like, well, what did you expect from mm -hmm. his lifestyle behavior? It sort of is this horrifying suggestion of you deserve what you got. Well, one, that perpetuates several myths. It perpetuates the idea that you have to be promiscuous or that promiscuity leads to HIV. There are plenty of people engaging in uh, safer sex practices that are very promiscuous that do not run the same risks and there are plenty of people uh, that can this is still something you can contract from a single mistake a single yes. slip up Absolutely. so tying those things together with his sort of problematic behavioral history uh, I think muddies the waters and is probably extremely frustrating to a lot of our HIV advocates. I had an interesting thought today. I'm curious to see what you think. I feel like the HIV positive community has to be looking at this in the same way that the trans community was incredibly fearful about Caitlyn Jenner. You know, that there's this idea that this super famous celebrity mm -hmm. is now going to become the face of this particular issue in our culture and the fear of how are they going to speak about it? How is it going to reflect on it? Because when you think about the history of HIV... And as far as openly uh, 
positive people that are extremely high profile. There's Magic Johnson and Danny Pintaro and Charlie Sheen. The the vast majority of celebrities we know who had and HIV. And Danny Pintaro was only very recently. recently. It was Magic Johnson for many, many years. Uh, but and many of them, we only knew about like right before they died or after. When right. you look at uh, Anthony Perkins and Liberace yes. and uh, all of the, the men that through the 80s and 90s that contracted it during the major crisis that we didn't find out about until people died. So this is a huge issue for our positive community. Well, here's what I had. I had a similar thought that you had about that, uh, that him becoming a spokesperson. And he said he didn't want to be the face of it. He, but he, he did also say, like, I'm going to cure it. Yeah, he did. So, say, yeah, like he said he that was, you can, He said, "I'm the guy." I, I here's what I think about that. First of all, Magic Johnson was loved, loved by the masses, loved by everybody. Still is used this as a an incredible platform to do a lot of good and education. Uh, I hope that he is able to do that. The problem is Charlie Sheen is not loved. Right. Charlie Sheen is not he he is he is basically despised by a lot of people and that's why we saw the backlash from so many who were judging him and his behavior because he has been very almost um proud of his bad boy right. uh, reputation right. for many, many years. And suddenly he's, you know, you, and you can you can go back to what we had this conversation where we could pick apart these quotes and go, well, I doubt very seriously that he has informed every single person, especially given his drug use, his admitted drug use. We could go to that place. And, and he says he's going, he said in the interview, you know, we will see because there may be somebody out there that comes after him with lawsuits. But I, I, it fa sounded like to me that there was going to be a lot more or a big one coming his way. So he had to come public with well, this. Well, this was National Enquirer, Enquirer was doing the story. Like well, the story was coming did, out. Did, did some, someone in his circle sold the story then? Basically, that's what he was implying that. He said that, you know, I thought I trusted these people, right. but in that he had to disclose, as he's saying, with prostitutes that could have been one night that he said he disclosed to every single person. So, well, that's I, not a close circle of friends, right? You know, it's not. No, yeah, that it was a. That and there some woman a took a picture of, yes. of his medication and blackmailed him. So, but that just demonstrates, though, the struggle that people that are HIV positive still face in our world, that a photo of his medication is blackmailable material. Like, that is, to me, the bigger issue. And you look at the hyperbole in the headlines. First of all, the word AIDS shouldn't be involved in this discussion. Charlie Sheen does not have AIDS. That That's right. It's a diagnosis. Um, and so the the media unfamiliar with the ins and outs and the specifics of what it means to be undetectable, what the current studies are showing. Well, I think it hopefully will open up a greater conversation about PrEP and the, the new advances that have been made. But the hyperbole of headlines because of his history as a bad boy is is dangerous to our positive community. There's, yes, it I, is. I do think there's the a fear, an understandable fear, that this could make things worse not better. And I don't see him turning out to be uh, what Caitlin has turned out to be for the trans community of a flawed but well-spoken and at least F someone making an effort. Hopefully he can live up to a similar uh, thing. But the, even in the interview, you watch the way he talks and that sort of tick, the way he speaks, mm -hmm. that there's just... He's not quite right. No, there's something off, and 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 and, and probably because of he, again, I'm not. This is not gossipy. He says that there was lots and lots and lots of drugs over the years. Right. Um, the other thing that I did think was a very positive thing about this is that there, everybody, uh, so many say this is just a gay disease, and this is. I mean, if we look at this, I mean, magic back in the day. That's but, certainly but true. This is the first time that uh, a heterosexual. Very very heterosexual male, given his reputation and and his own admission, has tested positive in a celebrity way. Yeah. So, but but to the wider thing, no one deserves this. No, no one asked for this. I'm that just saying that could no be one, positive for young not men. Related, not okay, related. Okay. Okay. I'm right. just the, the, in the summation is the the mentality of that Charlie Sheen because of his lifestyle or his behavior that he was asking for it that this is karma that this is something he deserved like no one no one deserves no, this no one asked not. for this people make mistakes and the, the 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 common and simple mistake that can lead to someone being HIV positive is also fundamentally different than the things that lead to people having heart attacks and things that are lifelong decisions that we don't judge in a similar manner no, that this is just one disease among a panoply of diseases uh, that 
can make life difficult for varying people. And the specific stigma of this disease is specifically related to an archaic judgment of the specifically gay community that we that hopefully this will work to reduce that stigma in popular culture. You know, and I'm I, I'm I'm an agnostic, but here I go to that scripture: "Ye who is without sin, cast that first stone." I mean, come on, we've all made mistakes in our lives. So why is there so much of that throwing stones at him? Yeah. So all right, well, moving on. Uh, we have more Mormon news. Over last, uh, I guess, two weeks ago, we reported uh, the the uh, how how the the Mormons had this very big decision that that uh, gay Mormons' children cannot be baptized. Correct in uh, yes. in the ba- in the Baptist. I just said the Baptist Church and the Mormons. So a lot of Mormons are now leaving the church over this gay apostate change. Thousands of LGBT Mormons quit the church at a rally in Salt Lake City on Saturday following its new policy that calls those in same-sex relationships apostates and denies their children baptisms. 1,000 letters of resignation were submitted online, and attorneys received an additional 1,500 letters at the Salt Lake event. Some ceremoniously walked to mailboxes to send off their final communication with the church. Many of the participants at Saturday's event said the, they, long to go, they long ago left the church And about 5% of the people taking part in the event were believed to be recently active members of the Mormon Church. So, First of all, it's weird that you have to write a legal letter to leave the Mormon Church. Like, I mean, when we were growing up, we definitely had, like, confirmation by letter of switching your Mm -hmm. church membership to another. But this is, like, a legal document. Like, these these are attorneys helping them legally leave the church. That's crazy. Well, you know what happened? Back to me. Uh, I, I, you know, I was a member of the First Baptist Church of Beverly Hills here when I first came to Los Angeles. And they had this big reunion a few years ago. And this is after I wrote Southern Baptist Sissies and been in the media as not exactly the poster boy for the Baptist church. And they sent me an invitation as a member of that church to come back and, you know, bring a casserole for this uh, fellowship. And did you? No. Uh, I wrote him a letter resigning from the church. That's what I did because I said, I don't want to be on your role. Please take me off your fucking role. I don't want to be when the role is called up yonder because I will not be there. So uh, You will not be there to say president so, and account So I it. had to write a letter, Emerson. Well, it's a huge mistake for the Mormon Church. I think. I think this kind of overt uh, bigotry, I get literally against the children of same-sex uh, couples or people, is uh, sending them down a dark and dangerous path. All right. Um. All right. We'll do these next four super fast. ABC is Dancing with the Stars is hosting the singer who is fancy an openly gay singer to sing his new song Boys Like You on an upcoming episode. Well, the song is about a man falling in love with another man, and so the choreographer wanted to perform a dance between two men. But allegedly, a producer responded to the choreographer's request saying, apologies to all, but this is a definite no from the network. Here's my problem with this. ABC is home of Shondaland, which is the most diverse shows on all of television. Really? There is so much diversity and so much LGBT and LGB representation in her shows, in Quantico, in Modern Family. And I get it that it's a bunch of old people that watch and vote on Dancing with the Stars, but a port- reportedly ABC is fine with near dancing, which was shown on last week's episode between Alex and Carlos, where they just sort of threw each other right. around. So it can be aggressive. It just can't be erotic, I guess. And I feel like near dancing is the new, like, no homo. Like, leave room for the Holy Spirit. Well, I have one thing to say. What? I say that them not allowing these boys to dance together will not make this show any less gay. That's the thing! <laughs> How are you going to worry about gay dancing on the gayest aesthetic the gay- show on your network? I mean, let's talk about the costumes. I mean... And the hair, <laughs> and the makeup, and those spray tans, and like shirts with no buttons. I mean, if Swarovski stopped sponsoring the crystals on that show, they'd all just be standing there in plain <laughs> matte satin. Shame on this executive who will not allow this. Shame on them. Uh, yeah. Super fast. Oh, I you know, I, years I've loved Ellen. I, I remember the day she came out, and it, I had just come out, and it was such an event, and then she lost that show, and we saw her come back and come back strong, and she just had her 2,000 show uh, last week, her, her, and, and, and she has now had 859,000 audience members in 12 years, 8,000. 000- 302 guests and uh, 14, I mean, 1,145 bands. I loved, I saw her first show, and I love that Jennifer Aniston came back with that welcome mat 
and yes for her back. 2000 show so, and and then they named the stage after her so yes, we'll Peter Roth stage. who used to be my boss over at, at 20th when he was at 20th he's been at Warner Brothers for many years and he said I am so pleased and so personally privileged to be able to officially dedicate stage one and it will be forever be known as the Ellen stage congratulations Ellen you've done so much for us all right skipping away on no I told Steve no, Grand well, that I would say his well if you, when, if you can't do fast when it's uh, time to well, do fast yeah, I'm going to say it. He, I just really quick. Steve Grand, our friend, he kept his word to attend Tuesday's Marine Court ball with the gay Marine uh, Sergeant Tanner White, and so good for you, Steve. They had a great time. It looked like he. You can check his Instagram and see the entire evening. I tweeted him. I can't be a Marines. hypocrite. I well, when my... I say fast, that means summarize the story, quick, not go, read all bam, of everything from bam. it. All right. You know what, Emerson? I know that you write all this shit, but it, you are not the boss of me. <laughs> Well, okay. I just assume that you're smart enough to be able to summarize the story. Do y'all see than what I have to go words. through? Just go, go, go. Um, okay, there is a new matchmaking site that came out to call for women seeking a gay best friend. The website is called Every Girl Needs a Gay. It's basically this woman started it because she missed her gay best friend and she wanted a website for women that were looking for one. What do you think of this? I don't know. I'm not speaking to. No, I'm. Kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, you know what? It sounds like it's fun to me. I'm not a. I. I, I don't have a big opinion. I know that there's a big outcry. You, Everybody got you, upset, and I was like, "Y'all, come on!" Like, I, mean, I get it. Like, you wouldn't make a white a website that said "gay boy looking for a black girl best friend." People would say that was racist. But like, at some point, I would we go have to for that exhausted? one. I just think. <laughs> I just think it's flattering. There are a number of women. It's it's a cute catchphrase. It is not a monolithic judgment about all gay. Men. And if you're not interested in being a woman's gay best friend, don't sign up for the website. Like that's the way I feel about it. If there, she's literally said, I am a middle aged. She said, I I am older than the bloggers and tweeters, and maybe have missed the evolution that has taken place between my day and this great new day where there is a broader acceptance of everyone but a middle aged woman who was just looking for her Boston gay. And I just thought that's like y'all. It's kind of sweet. And I mean, how many of us can point to that girl who was. The, the 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 one that accepted us in high school, you know? I, I mean, think... Uh, that, that went to the prom with us. That celebrates know? that there is a special so, fruit fly relationship. And I still know women who prefer the term fag hag. I mean, don't call somebody that if they don't claim it themselves first. But I'm like, y'all, also don't be upset that there are girls out there that want to be your friend. Take the compliment and move on. If you don't like it, don't sign up. The end. And... We're going to do a one-act play. Oh, yes, we are. Um, you know, Katy Perry is, I don't know, many of you don't may not know this, but her parents are both uh, pastors. And uh, I don't think they, from this conversation, it doesn't sound like they have the greatest relationship in the world, but there was this disgruntled Christian named Christine Wick. She waited outside the lobby of a Phoenix radio station, a lot of Phoenix in the news this week, and knowing that Keith Hudson, Katy Katy Perry's father had appeared on the program. She waited for him, and then she just kind of attacked him. So Emerson and I fought and fought, and he won. He gets to play the girl. We did not fight because <laughs> he always gets to play the women. He very kindly offered to let me play the crazy lady this I time. I did, and, and, and here we go. So we're going to act out the video that was on uh, Facebook. So I'll be playing the role of Christine Wyke. And I will be Katy Perry's father, Keith Hudson. She's after she got his attention, basically, hey you, hey you, she said, Minister to your daughter, you ought to know better. When you have a girl that walks with Satan the way she does. Do you have kids? I do. I have no relationship with my son because he is walking away from the Lord and he exploits it. Well, before you point your finger at me, why don't you point your finger at you? Because I have what's called tough love. My son is playing in the road and I discipline. You allow Katy Perry to play in the highway and she is taking you to hell right along with her, including millions of young women and young men who are listening to her video. I have nothing to do with yes, that. Yes, you do. You just said, I just walked. You think you're acting like a Christian right now? Yes, I am because... I am rebuking you because my kid watches your kid's video and it's sending him to hell because of the choice he made because of your daughter and your lack of discernment and discretion. Shame on you. You're not a parent. You'll be held accountable for what you have done and allowed her to do. Until you can judge others, 
You should judge yourself. You call yourself a Christian. I have a right to judge. I have every right to judge you. The fruit of your tree is pretty rotten, along with your daughter's. You don't know it. You don't know it. I watched the video, A.T., made by your daughter. She's having sex with demons in the video. Why do you come in like this? Because you are leading more families astray. My daughter's not serving God, but your son is not serving God. And either. I have nothing to do with my son because of that. Well, your son is not because of my daughter. You know, because God is angry with the wicked every day and your daughter is wicked i know <gasps> i love that it's a competition of like we're both bad parents but who's worse uh, this was a little bit enlightening and crazy to me i thought uh, that very good job emerson thank I, you i think, I really I think you're spirit. gonna get a call back I felt the spirit for, move for this for me yeah but uh, literally like that his defense is not a defense of his daughter. It's a you're being a bad Christian and you should judge yourself. And then how proud she is of her right to judge him is fascinating to me. It really crazy is. All right, onward. We've got a Barbie boy, a commercial for a new limited edition Barbie in conjunction with Fashion House. Uh, features a young boy fan with two girls. The uh, the boy exclaims, "Is it, how do you say this? Moschino? Moschino Barbie is so fierce. The boy's hairstyle could not uh, could be a nod to designer Jeremy Scott, who dresses huge celebrities. So good for Barbie. I loved it so much. You know, I wasn't a, I wasn't actually one of those play with dolls, probably because I didn't have sisters. I was, but I but I know so many guys. I didn't have sisters either. This would have been such an enlightening thing to say. Like they're just toys and it's fine for you to play with whatever toys you're interested in whether it's the dump truck dump truck or the barbie that whatever you want to play with it because what you're in the mood for that afternoon that there's not anything shameful about your interest or your preference for playtime well that whole thing in sorted lives where latrell said i knew you were gay when you won that doll Susie cue and instead of the dump truck that your daddy that was my story and it wasn't really my mother who got it for me it was my nana and my mother and dad, my dad said, no, I could not have this doll Susie Q that I wanted. And I went over to my grandparents and nobody fucked with my Nana. And she gave me that present and she looked at my dad and she said, he can have this because I'm giving it to him. And that's how I got my doll Susie Q that I brushed her hair until she was bald. There you go. <laughs> but wouldn't it have been great, though, if it had been like, see, it's fine. It's it literally in the commercial on the television. Yeah, it's like, you know? it's OK. Yeah, it's that okay. it's just not a thing. Because I didn't. The thing is, at that age, you just want it. You don't know it's wrong. Right. Somebody it, has to tell you it's wrong. No, no child is born with shame. That is something that is taught. It's yeah. at whatever age it arrives. The first time in your life that you feel shame because of something you like, something you are interested in, something that you love, changes all of us as people. And I think, for particularly within our community, many of us felt that at a much younger age than people typically do with puberty, where you just start feeling weird. And so, I think this kind of advancement will keep young LGBT children from growing up to have some of the issues some of us are carrying around, like. No. Across and um, I actually had another doll that I kept uh, sacred. My, well, not secret, but she was so beautiful that my mother only let me bring her out to play. Her name was Lisa Lindora. <laughs> I know that she clearly because you didn't get to play with her that much. This is the first time we're hearing the story because we've heard. About I could that see Susie her in my Q. head. Isn't it crazy that I could see that she had this blonde hair that was kind of wavy and curly and this really it was like a china doll or something. Anyway, I love that. All right, uh, jump on, to that follow up. Uh, the the. The, the follow-up. Oh, the follow-up. Okay. Yeah. Oh, we, we talked about this on the show, I guess, about three or four months ago, where there was an impersonator woman. Do you remember this, John? She was she was uh, impersonating a man. She would blindfold her, her prey, basically a British woman. And she spent two years disguising her voice and appearance, convincing her friends to wear a blindfold every time they met and pretending to be a man through 100 hours of time together. Uh, in 10 sexual encounters, and the accuser then uh, c cried foul, and uh, she was arrested, and she was just convicted to eight years in jail. For sexual assault. Sexual assault, eight I, years. Ooh, I have to be harsh. honest, I'm uncomfortable with this story a little bit for denying the ownership of the behavior of the person in the blindfold. I feel like... How like the you didn't know all of the facts of the situation, and but you so were willing that's to assault, go there. But you pr willingly participated under the circumstances, and come to find out, like what if it, like how far does this fall down the rabbit hole? Like oh, the person has blonde hair. Like I feel like there's something a little bit uh, 
homophobic or transphobic in the sentence of because if they looked different than the photos they had been sent, would that be considered enough false information uh, for a sexual assault? If you willingly engage in blindfolded behavior, I don't know how much sympathy I have for you if the blindfold comes off and it's not exactly what the person thought. You still willingly engaged in this behavior. Am I crazy? I don't think you're crazy. And and then she, you know, she or she argued in court. Her defense was that they that the the girl knew that she was right. in disguise. And then uh, the the judge said, "Your defense was that the complainant knew. I can't do this accent just as you can do, brother. Knew you were who you were from the outset, and that this was just role play. These apologies were because you knew the game was up, and you, that your cruel deception had been discovered. Cruel deception. I mean, I definitely it think is, it's emotionally cruel. Like it she, is. but uh, but I feel it, like are there uh, like issues on both sides of this? Because who hangs out with somebody for a hundred hours, like sunbathing with a blindfold on yes like because there's something wrong there's something off you say you know you said charlie sheen was off in his but there's something off in the behavior of anybody who is willing to do what uh, she both did. sides of yes, this behavior absolutely. like that you didn't peek once to make sure like or ask that like it was like yeah. mm. anyway well right. i mean i i think it's a it's a horrifying result and i certainly am not supporting like lying to anyone and misleading people no. like we've all heard eight catfish, years in jail catfish stories but i just wonder about eight years in prison for what was a live action catfish uh that you could have stopped at any point is my uh, all right concern. all right well in trans cetera news uh snl this weekend did uh, a great bit that i really loved pete davidson does these sort of ridiculous monologues as a part of the uh weekend update on various social issues and this week he took on the hero ordinance in houston and the trans bathroom predator myth and said it in a sort of broken down hipstery way. And he said, so the theory is that guys in their relentless quest to watch women go to the bathroom are going through years of hormone surgery, changing their names, their wardrobe, coming out to their families, all for that big payoff of peeing in a room without urinals. What is this fantasy that they think is going on in there? Even if for some reason you're desperate to use a women's bathroom, you can just walk in. There's no bouncer. The door's right there. Seriously, I've been using the ladies room here to poop for the last two months at SNL. And I felt like his mockery of the lunacy of the bathroom predator myth was great because it sort of takes the air out of this uh, ar argument that we have seen used so successfully in a way that states these sort of obvious. Like, one, anybody can walk into any bathroom anywhere. Being a predator is still illegal, right. as we have said. So what is this giant thing that people are going to change everything about their life, their lifestyle, and their gender presentation to the world to match the gender that they know they are inside in order to go into a bathroom to commit assault? The <laughs> Well, it seems like to me that a lot of the things that I read from these people that are hateful and, 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 and using this defense is they're saying that there are the predators are going to pretend now to be trans so that they could they could still do that. They could do I that mean, anyway. It, there's no it's just you could just poke a million holes in all yes. of this. It's so ridiculous. Yes. And, 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 and the thing is, people don't want to say it's ridiculous. They don't want to see it's ridiculous because they don't want to admit that truly all they are is just transphobic. That's what right. they are. And, like, really, really worried about people who just desperately want to use a bathroom and they don't want to talk to you in there either. Yeah. Um, and then the second in trans setter news, I found this story interesting. Uh, Caitlyn Jenner gave the Keat Notes speech during a luncheon in Chicago last week to a group of 1,000 people as a part of a speaker series for the uh, Chicago House Trans Life Center. Now, as she left, there was a protest having out front. They had posted in advance that they were planning to protest it under a Facebook group named I Ain't Kate, of course, mocking uh, the title of her show. Because they didn't feel that her position as someone of privilege, that they don't feel understands their own privilege, uh, is a great person to be speaking on the issues facing uh, low income and regular trans people in the community. They stood out front and said, you are an insult to trans people and to trans and to women. You insult all trans people. We've been assaulted by police, by Johns, and we have been violated by the system. It's interesting because they were shooting season two of I Am Kate, Jenny Boylan and Jen and Shandy and Candace, I believe, were all actually there at the event. And the event's MC said kind of what I thought. The point was to get people to come and talk about trans issues. Because she's been the subject of media scrutiny for decades, she's in a unique position to take whatever criticism she gets for speaking out on behalf of trans people who need help. And for me, it goes even like deeper than that. I understand these women's frustration with Caitlyn not representing the vast majority of trans experience. Right. But the flip side is, at a fundraiser, you need the biggest name that you can in the room because they raise like $20,000. And for better or for worse, people 
are going to show up to hear what she has to say, which is going to raise money to benefit the trans people that don't have outlets and forums to that give you the money specifically that, yeah, exactly. are talking about. Right. Like, I get it. If you want to protest her getting an award, great. That's the time to say she doesn't represent us. If you want to protest, like, her in other places, talk about how she doesn't represent the great. But I think protesting at a fundraiser, like, I don't care who the person is. Get the most famous person you can to stand on that stage, sell those tickets, and raffle stuff off. Right. Yeah. I just think you're shooting yourself. Did in they the disrupt? Foot. The, did they disrupt? No, it? not at the event. They were outside, yeah. and it was clearly a protest designed right. to draw attention that there is more than Caitlyn, and I think that's very valid and the frustration that many of the trans community feel. Uh, but nonetheless, when it's specifically a fundraiser, I'm like, girl, get those dollars. Like, yeah, get the dollars. That's what matters. Help more people. So, and finally, oh, and we're checking, checking in, in my crazy. Cries. I said earlier today, I said this ought to be the Dell and Emerson and Pappy Pat show because it, it, Pat, Pat Robertson just continues to be our you know our I ask every guest. week if he wants to come be on our show, and I haven't heard back. I ask every week, is he still alive? Uh, but I I, I'm, I want him to live on because he gives me a lot of amusement. I love playing him. So Pat Robertson has ranted and raved about the LGBT rights leading to the destruction of America, like Sodom and Gomorrah. Experts have argued about what the sin was, which was inhospitality uh, and such, but conservative Christians have adamantly proclaimed it was homosexuality, and we know that is not true. If you really read the Bible, that's not what it was. But modern and progressive Christians cite another book of the Old Testament, Ezekiel, to claim the cities were destroyed because they were too prideful. Ezekiel 16 49 says, Behold, this was the iniquity of thy sister Sodom. Pride, fullness of bread, and abundance of idleness was in her and her daughters. Neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and the needy. This week, Pat Robertson said exactly that. <gasps> so, Did the 700 Club cancel him? He said, Pride, the Bible says, idleness and abundance of bread. Neither were they thankful. That was the sin of Sodom and Gomorrah. He didn't talk about homosexuality. So, I mean, I don't know. Well, wonders never cease. I mean, I feel like, you know, miracles do happen. I feel like next week he's going to have to apologize. Like, he'll be like, I'm, I, oh, no. It was homosexuals, Bu too. Buggery is bad, too. We, we invented a word, sodomite, because of these people. So, obviously, we feel Well, we ought to get it. clips of all the old shows just to show just that to he's show contradicting and himself. Say, well, well, bless his heart. Um, you guys, first of all, to those of you who listen and worry about Dell's self-esteem, it is always fine. Part of the fun of doing this show is that I put the stories together and then give him a hard time as we wander our way through the world of LGBT news. Yes, and I, I do tend to be long-winded, and Emerson and I walk out of here friends every single time. So, so y'all don't worry don't, about us. Don't write me the letter saying, "Are you and Emerson okay?" Do not. Do, we don't need you. On, we don't need to be on your prayer list. We are okay. Um, I will be in Palm Springs on Friday and Saturday night at the Purple Room, and I love playing the Purple Room. And Ann Walker's going to be in my audience yes. on Friday night. So y'all so, show up and see yeah, Dell and Ann. Yeah, come see us, and we'll have a real. We'll have a big old time. Yes. And next Tuesday night is the season finale of season three of the People's couch to all of you that watch and tweet along with us thank you i will be live tweeting on twitter for our final episode of this season if you want that holiday shirt teespring.com backslash ho ho homo uh for your holiday party wear thanks for listening yeah and tony sweet's coming up and jasper cole on ubn so stick around see you next week Now that you've found UBN Radio and discovered our quality talk shows, it's time to spread the word to friends, family, and the universe. 24 hours of music and talk. Radio without limits. That's why people keep coming back for more. That's UBNRadio.com.